This round's AFL Record Print Edition is available on game day at newsagents, Coles and Coles Express. Also online via afl.com.au, the AFL app, sen.com.au and the SEN app. Proudly part of our top sport, official wagering part of the AFL Record. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. He is a very talented human. Don't you worry about that. And so is our next guest. He's the big cheese at the AFL Record. Yes. Or one of. If he was a cheese, what cheese would he be? Let's ask him. Ash Brown <laughs> what joins us. Hello, Ash. What <laughs> cheese would you be if you were a cheese? Oh, just a, a tasty cheese with a bit of bite in it, I think. That's oh, probably, really? Uh, that'll be it. Just your standard mature cheddar. Now, you put your reputation on the line again. You've done your top 50 movers and shapers. I, I had a little crack at Kane Corns making it at 48. He was on the text straight away saying jealousy is very unattractive. Mm. So how does Kane get in the top 50 at 48 ahead of a president like Peter Gordon or Nicole Livingston at 50 <laughs> who is just steering a new generation of humans into our great game? Uh, well... <laughs> It's uh, Kane on the basis he's probably uh, he's, what, he's become a member of the football media who you can't help but pay attention to at all times. He doesn't he, he's not one for groupthink, and a lot of us are not guilty of that falling into same same sorts of things. But uh, Kane takes every every uh, issue on its merit and uh, often has a different point of view, but a considered point of view and well thought out. And I just think he's a, a very hard working member of the media as well. Some people do a lot of a lot of gigs in the media and they're just say the same things over and over on the different platforms, but Kane works very hard and uh, a, fresh, a fresh voice of everything that he does. Gee, I'll put you under pressure then. Very good answer, and I totally accept that he is one of the hardest workers in the media. Plus, I know he listens all the time. So Now, Ash, she used to do the list with a survey sent out to significant people in the football world. You've taken it on yourself now. Which is the better way to do it? I quite like the way I do it now, Rich. I know I put, put my head on the line in doing it, but it was partly a brand exercise because it became known as my list. And no matter how yeah. many people I spoke to, yeah. it ended up being Ash Brown's yeah. moves and shapers. So after all, I thought, well, why do May as well just be my list. Also, I mean, I've, I've had this book I've just finished. Yeah. I spoke to a lot of people last year. It was a very easy list, very easy to have the information at my disposal to write the, the list this year because I'd come to learn a fair bit about who did what in footy, particularly last year. So on that basis, I thought it was, uh, again, easy to do mine. I think I do prefer doing it myself, actually. It's also the anxiety of getting the survey out and chasing people up yep. and what have you. And, and results are a bit skewed because there were people there who were taking the piss. And, but anyone who does uh, a list has to work to some criteria, some basis, some guidelines. How do you define who's a mover and shaper in AFL footy? I think it's they make it's 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 the body of work over the last twelve months, and then looking to what they'll do this year, and also their their what they've done over a period of time. For example, this year, I mean, Anastasia Palaszczuk has gone from never being in the list in anyone's dreams to number thirteen mm. on the basis mm. that she saved the game. You know, saved the game basically by agreeing to open the state up to the AFL. The mm. AFL said we're going to come and spend a lot of money. She said that sounds good, and within a few days, players from uh, 10 Victorian clubs more or less want to play, uh, having, having already followed the WA and SA clubs who've been there earlier. So As, that's why she would get in. She'll yeah. probably get in next year. Agree, agree with that one. Very interesting that you mentioned the number 13 because last year number 13 was um, our boss and your CEO, Craig Hutchison, and you've dropped him down to 19. Have you been called into the big office? <laughs> a few people have asked you that question already, whether <laughs> I've, uh, please explain from... Hutchie. No, I just think it's a year, and I think the, the record story says that there's some, it was an unusual year, and I think there were people who had a huge, I mean, a huge amount of work just got bumped up the order this year. Hutchie, I mean, he pivoted, the way he pivoted our business and steered it through a you know, huge crisis. It was all credit to him, but I just felt over the course of the year there were there were people who uh, who couldn't be left out of the top 10, 15, 18. Can I ask you another one on, on a serious note? The others are a little bit tongue-in-cheek. But uh, you have a look at the list, and we'll go through the top ten very shortly. But um, just having a really quick look, I, I think there's only one footballer in the top 20 or so. So it's a bit like what comes first, the chicken or the egg. You've got Dustin Martin at number five. But if we don't have footballers and the heroes of kids and generations of people, we don't, we don't have a game. So why are players not rated more highly? That's a good question. I think... I think it's also a combination of of the time. I mean, in years gone past, we've had uh, 
Like Lance Franklin has been a staple every year because he means so much to the Sydney market, but he hasn't been on the ground for more than 12 months. Uh, Patrick James will get there. Obviously, he's got the uh, Players Association hat that he wears as well. I mean, Daisy Pearce is at 20. Uh, Aaron Phillips makes it as well. So there's a, a, a speaking of players in that. Bradley Medals normally gets in as well, but Lockie, Lockie Neal, by, by his own admission, cutting a reasonably low profile for superstar mm. football and playing out of the Brisbane market, even though it was more prominent last year, mm. probably not enough to get him over the line. But we don't have... What the game doesn't have at the moment is the superstar full forward who's dragging people through the gates and, you know, w- w- people go from end-to-end to watch them play who, who are compulsory viewing. So it, I just think it's that not, this might be a quirk of the year that the players uh, don't do as much as they might in any other year. And on the terms of admin, when Richard Goiter is the... AFL Commission Chairman, is it number four? How does that define him? Well, I think it's, it's fairly powerful, but I mean, he bristles at the suggestion that the Commission was more hands-off last year. But yeah. again, from having spoken to a lot of people, without Paul Marsh and Travis Hold, yeah. I mean, the AFL, Gil, could, Gil did a lot last year. He could only do so much. The players, from the very moment uh, Gil was called by Martin Pakula, uh, about 10 days out from the season saying you have to think about having no crowds. His first call was to um, Paul Marsh to say we have to work together to mm. get a season away. And I think several key decisions had to be made with the players' input and Paul Marsh brought that along. Travis Old was handed fixturing, broadcasting and the the, the the number crunching in the deal with Queensland. I mean, that were the three things that landed on his desk last year. You can't tell me that doesn't make him a highly influential person in the game based on what he did over the last 12 months. I mean, mm. I, I defend that one to the hill. Now, everyone can see this uh, through there. Uh, will this be in the AFL record this week? It is in the AFL record. Uh, it's, it's on sale at all grounds this week. It's also uh, all online at scn.com.au, the top, the top 50 with... Full explanations for all 50. Yeah, I've got the storyline on all the full 50 here. So just quickly for those that haven't got it, Eddie McGuire came in at 10. He was eight last year. Martin Pakula, the Victorian Minister mm. for Support, came in at nine. Last year he was 30. James Warburton, uh, the CEO of Seven West Media, was six last year. He's eight. Andrew Dillon, the General Counsel, General Manager of Game Development AFL, was four last year. He's seven. Steve Hocking at six. Well, I reckon that one could be debated. Um, but we won't do that now. So he's gone from two to six. Dustin Martin at five. He was 18 last year. His uh, legend and reputation just grows after the way he performs in big games. Richard Goiter at four. Travis Old, three. Paul Marsh at two. And Gillan McLaughlin, I think everyone agrees by and large, he's done a wonderful job since being in the yep. uh, big chair. He's done a fantastic job. It was a lead shift. And yeah, we don't do margins in this moves and shapers, but this year he was number one by... The length of the Flemington straight, as I say, he just uh, towered over the game with a, a masterful display of leadership across the, across the board. Now, and Ash, you also wrote the book on season 2020, the season that no one ever expected. How's the book going? Well, it's going to for a couple of days, so I'm waiting anxiously for the first sales figures, but I'm very happy with the receptions from those who've read it so far. It's a complete account of everything that happened last year from the very first phone call that Richard Gorder got mm. from... I'm just at Qantas saying, we've got an issue in China that I think you might want to know about um, and walks all the way through. So you enjoyed the process, a lot of hard work, but uh, I think it's a stand-up is a good read and an historical document about a season, the most remarkable season played in the history of the game. Mm. 4.30 news coming up, followed by Rory Laird. Looking forward to that chat. Just quickly though, Ash, it must be great to get a hard copy of the AFL record in our hands and have crowds back at the footy. Yeah, it's going to be great tonight at the MCG. People will be able to walk in to buy their records. And uh, sponsored by 4 and 20 Pies this year. We give them a shout out. And uh, yeah, it's a sign of things back to normal now with crowds at the MCG. Footy records on sale at the ground. We're slowly getting back to normal. I know you guys had a lot had it for a lot of last year, which was wonderful. But uh, uh, a lot of people in Melbourne did it hard and uh, can't wait to get to the footy this weekend. Good on you, Ash. Really appreciate your time. Well done on that top 50 of movers and shapers. You can. It's not folklore, it's fact that country footy brings local communities and its people together. Visit countryfootyscores.com.au. Delivered by Red Energy and TAC. Get your country footy fix and all the latest results at countryfootyscores.com.au.